What's up, guys? Welcome to the video. As you see by the title, because you just clicked on it, it says revealing my entire cryptocurrency portfolio. Now, I probably watched at least 10 videos on YouTube of other people revealing their crypto portfolio. So it's, I think it's really cool and interesting to see exactly what people are, what cryptos people are getting into, because there's thousands and thousands of cryptos at this point that you can get into. So as for me, uh, I do tend to be a little more of a conservative investor. It's kind of funny to say the word conservative and crypto in the same sentence, but I do stick for the most part with the blue chips of the cryptos, the one that have, that have been around. And also I have one that's one or two that's a little bit more speculative. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So as you see uh, by the little picture here, so this is my 100% little pie. So around 50% or 48% of my entire um, pie here is going to be Ethereum, which is the native current for ETH. So I'm going to go over this pie first, and then I'm going to go through each, each and every single crypto and kind of read you what the definition says and then give you kind of like my own version. And then hopefully you can decide if that's what you want to invest in. Anyway, so again, almost 50% is Ethereum. I'm a huge, huge, huge Ethereum uh, bull. And I think that this year is going to be a huge year for Ethereum. And I'll tell you why after I go through the rest of these. Okay, next we have Bitcoin. I'm just going to run through quickly. It's right around 32%. Actually, it might be a little bit less because I sold a little bit and actually bought more Cardano. Cardano, which is my next one, ADA, that's the native token for Cardano. Um, so this is 18%, but I think it should be a little bit higher, but 18, 18 to 20%. And my last one, this is like my, this is either going to like 20x, 40x, or 0x. So this is kind of like my very speculative play. This is called HBAR, Hedera Hashgraph. Um, I've seen a lot of videos on this, and it's like, it's like a version of XRP, um, but obviously a little bit better. So way smaller market cap. It has like a tenth of the market cap of a, of XRP. So I got into it as a very specific play, but I would say like this is my big portion of my portfolio. As you can see, there's only 3%, which is very, very small. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it. Um, what is Bitcoin? I'm just gonna read your definition and then say my own version. So Bitcoin is a decentralized digital currency without a central bank or a single administrator that can be sent from user to user on a peer-to-peer -peer Bitcoin network without needing for intermediaries. So that sounds very confusing, but basically what Bitcoin is, it was designed to be a peer-to-peer -peer cash payment. So instead of you sending me, selling me money on like through Chase or through Bank of America, you send money to somebody on the Bitcoin network, just like you can, just like you can Venmo or cash up somebody. So this is on a Bitcoin network. The um, the upside of that is that it's decentralized, so nobody can stop that transaction. Um, nobody, there's no central party involved. And the way that 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 transaction gets valid is their thing. Their computers called miners. So these miners, these computers, these they solve this pretty much like complicated equation that validates the block. So that's why Bitcoin is like very slow, but it's very safe because it takes like, I think like seven, 10 minutes to confirm a new block. So when I send you money through Venmo or through Zelle, there has to be a company that validates that transaction versus on the Bitcoin network, that transaction gets sent out to all the computers and they all come to consensus to validate. That's a basic, um, basic uh, kind of thing, translation. But so, so it's designed to be a peer-to-peer -peer cash payment. Now, what it's involved into is, is the digital gold. It's a like gold 2.0 because with gold, it's heavy, it's it's big, it's not very portable because you have to carry around. Like imagine going to the airport with gold. Like that's who's gonna do that. All right. So Bitcoin is it's very scarce. There will only ever be 21 million Bitcoin in existence. And we've actually mined right around, I think like 90% of it already. So there's only 10% left. And so it's deflationary because it's limited supply. And as we know, supply and demand, as demand goes up and the supply is the same, the price can go up. That's very, very like simple ones. So this is the OG, this is the first cryptocurrency that was ever created. Okay, enough of RAM. Next, we have Ethereum. So this is my like my biggest holding. So I'll read you the, or read the quote unquote definition. Ethereum is a decentralized open source blockchain with smart contract functionality. Ether is a native cryptocurrency on the platform. Amongst cryptocurrency, Ether is the second only to Bitcoin and market cap. Okay, pretty much, yeah. And it's created by Vitalik Buterin. Okay, so basically what Ethereum is, as it says, it's open source blockchain. But what it means is that think of Ethereum as the Apple App Store, okay? So it is the platform, it, it is the network. And think of how many apps were built on the Facebook platform or on the Apple App platform, right? So basically you can build an app 
on the Ethereum network. And so the, the benefits of this is that it's open source and it's permissionless. So you don't need, so, so for example, like if Apple or Facebook doesn't like the app that you create, they can easily just like shut, shut you down and boom, you don't have an app anymore. You don't have a business anymore. But, but with this, you, you create your own business, you, create, you can create your own apps, but for, for everything, it can be DeFi. So like uh, stuff to do with money, there's, as you probably heard of NFTs, that's become crazy, cr like crazy thing in the past one to two years which is a non-fungible tokens. And that runs, a lot of that stuff runs on the Ethereum network. For example, OpenSea, most of the transactions are on the Ethereum network. And Ether is the, the native uh, like token. So Ether is like what you have to use to transact. And long story short with Ethereum, they actually do what Bitcoin does currently, which is the proof of work model, which is where the computers validate transactions. But they actually this year they're moving to proof of stake. Basically what that means, and I'll explain that in a second, is where um, instead of computers validating the transaction, people who own the actual coin validate trend, that transaction. Anyway, hope, hope that makes sense, but Ethereum is pretty much what Apple is, what Google is, and what Facebook is. That It's, it's, it's a network, it's a platform, you can build stuff on top of it, which is pretty cool. Next, we have Cardano. Let me read you the quote-unquote definition. Cardano is a public blockchain, open source and decentralized, with consensus achieved using proof of stake. It can facilitate peer-to-peer -peer transaction with its internal cryptocurrency ADA. Cardano was founded as a team by Ethereum co-founder Charles Hoskinson. So yes, um, Charles Hoskinson, which is the founder of Cardano, was actually one of the founders of Ethereum, and he saw a lot of shortcomings in Ethereum, which is why he left it and created his own network, which is the Cardano network. And Cardano is very similar to Ethereum in that it's an open source and you can build apps on top of it. But the difference is, is that Cardano is already a proof of stake. So instead of using a lot of energy in these miners, which is the biggest criticism that Bitcoin gets that takes a lot of energy to mine transactions. On, um, on Cardano, for example, the Cardano that I have, I stake it. And by staking it, I get like 5% interest because my Cardano validates transactions. So you have incentive to keep the blockchain um, honest and pure because your money is in it. Like, why would I want to cheat on a transaction um, on the network that I have my money in. Does that make sense? So that's that's how it keeps people honest. Anyway, so yeah, that, that's a little bit of a Cardano. Again, I don't want to make this video too long, but I feel like it will be. And then next we have what's called HBAR. So this is Hedera Hashgraph. So all it says is HBAR is a native energy efficient cryptocurrency on the Hedera public network. So basically with Hedera Hashgraph, without boring you or confusing you, it actually doesn't use blockchain. It uses what's called Hashgraph technology, which is a little bit more even like futuristic than blockchain. But let me go to their website and sh like read off some of the quick numbers and then I'll close out the video because again, I feel like this is probably already like 10 minutes long, but basically, hello speed, hello st stability, hello council. So I'm going to scroll down. This is the, these are the biggest uh, companies that are investing in Hedera. Um, so we have Boeing, we have Google, we have IBM, we have LG. We have, I think, team, yeah, T-Mobile. So as you can see, ginormous companies. Also, uh, what's his name? Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank, Mr. Wonderful. He actually owns uh, HBAR. He has personally said himself as well. So basically, this is HBAR is what considered a third generation public ledger. Okay, so we have Bitcoin. So that's about three transactions per second. Ethereum, 12. And a Hedera can supposedly can do 10,000 per second. Average fee is $22. Ethereum is $19. And... Hedera is 0 0.001. As you can see, it's very, very cheap to transact on Hedera Hashgraph. And the amount of time it takes to confirm a transaction, 10 to 60 minutes on Bitcoin, as you can see, very slow. Ethereum, 10 to 20 seconds. It sounds pretty fast. As you can see, HBAR is even faster, three to five seconds. And this is the energy efficient. So basically, all HBAR is, is, is that it's, um, it's, it's more scalable, it's faster. Um, so yeah, and th th this is like my pure speculative play. I think it's either gonna 40X within the next five, 10 years or it's gonna go to zero and I'm okay with losing just 3% of that. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. That was my full crypto portfolio. If I make any changes or add any more coins, because there are a few coins I am interested in like, like Solana, like Polkadot, um, Avalanche and a few others. And if I do make those uh, buys and add to my portfolio, I will let you guys know. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something and yeah, I'm a big, big believer in crypto and let's see where this year goes.